The Rihanna Navy, by the way. Um, they're badass. They're, they're badass. badass. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. Um, they're fun. We have a lot of similar characteristics. Yes. Um, they're super shady, and it makes me laugh. Super <laughs> shady, and it makes me laugh. They keep that's... me super entertained with that. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I have to say, for those of you who have not been within spitting distance of Rihanna, she is as beautiful <laughs> as you think she is. You're absolutely gorgeous. I have to say, the album, you, you're welcome. <laughs> the album, Unapologetic, yes. comes out in 12 days. Yes. Everyone is very excited. Yes. And yes. everyone absolutely, and I have to say, 62 million fans on Facebook. May I point out, that is a, just a hair over the amount of people that voted for our president <laughs> in, in the election. Yes. So if you want to know, I think Rihanna won the election. <laughs> it's the truth. How does that make you feel, being the top, the top public figure on Facebook? What does that feel like? Um, it, it doesn't feel real. Um, uh huh. I, I don't know. That's a lot of people yeah, to it is. even <laughs> think or even imagine what it looks like all together. So it's hard to even grasp hold of that idea, but it's exciting um, to know that they care. <laughs> it is, absolutely, and they, and they absolutely do care. You're about to go on tour, the 777 tour. You're going to 82 countries? No, 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 seven countries. Seven countries. In seven days. Yes. With seven shows. Okay. And we're taking 84 countries of press with us. There's oh, wow. 84 okay. countries Amazing. signed on to be on the plane, and it's the 777 plane. Wow. Seventh album. Seventh album. Yes. Wow. And you have, you just had your 23rd top 10 hit mm -hmm. with Diamonds. You are 24 years old, is that right? Yes. Is that, yes. yes? Yeah. Wow. So one more, which will come in about a minute. <laughs> and you will have a top 10 hit for the amount of years that you're alive. I mean, that's amazing. Do you have a favorite Rihanna song, or does it change all the time? Uh, it used to be Umbrella before Diamonds. Before, before Diamonds, Diamonds came along. Okay. And then, I mean, Diamonds right now is just... Thank you. <laughs> that's it's, nice. it's a really powerful song, even to listen to it. It, it just gets you, like, ugh. You just get sucked in, and yeah. even if you're in the club, it like oh, it really fucks with your head. Like, yeah. <laughs> like right even if now, you're in the club, for deep. sure, this for sure, deep if you're right in the now, club. I'm too drunk for this shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you think is the ultimate Rihanna club song? Because God knows, I have been in some clubs and listened to your voice. What do you think is the ultimate? Rihanna club song. Definitely, we found love right now. Right, yeah. right, right. That's He's, my favorite one to. That's listen your to favorite in a club one to listen well. to in a club. Do you have a song that, as as you're going on the on the seven 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 tour, is there a song that you know you have to sing, but you're a teeny bit sick of singing? Actually, <laughs> there are a few songs that we had on the original track, uh, on the original set list, sorry, for the 7-7 Seven Seven tour. Yeah. And I took some off for that very reason. Not that I'm sick of performing it, it's just a little more intimate. This, these settings, these venues, which are really secret locations at this point. And I want it to be really, like, more like fan favorites. Like, they're, yeah. you know, not just the hits. Right. And some of my favorites, too. So you're resting some until the next. Yes, and then the next, we just have to wipe out a whole bunch because we have so many new records that right. I can't wait for my fans to hear on Unapologetic. Yes. <laughs> is, there, is there a song, I mean, I have to imagine this is like your baby. You're just about to, you know, have your new baby in, in 12 <laughs> days. Is there a song? 11 days now. Oh, 11 days, I'm yes. sorry. Is there a song on, uh, on the on the album, Unapologetic, 
that you are most excited for the Navy to hear that you're thinking, oh, well, this one is going to slay them? Well, there, there seems to be really excited about number 10. Right. That's track 10. Uh, Nobody's business. Nobody's business. Well, I got to tell you, everybody's talking about nobody's business today. I Thank listened you. to a little bit of it. There's um, some of it was leaked online today. Yeah, nobody's some business. It's a it's a duet with Chris Brown, and really it goes. Uh, he's saying, "I want to make you mine, and it ain't nobody's business." Basically, and and you're going back and forth. So, is the message of that song as obvious as as it appears, or what can you tell us? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nobody's business is basically the way I look at everything regarding my personal life. Yeah. Um, it, you know, even though you have to witness it, it's being documented at every second, it, it still is mine. Uh -huh. You know, it, it still is, this is my, mine at this point. And when it gets to my music and stuff like that, I'll give and I'll give and I'll give. And I just feel like, I need to keep a little bit for me that I get to decide. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Still, though, it's it becomes a, a conversation point because you're you're putting it out there. Well, which it, is I can't. I'm not putting it out there as much as is it is, is just out, there. Yes. You know, I can't run away from that. If I had it my way, it would be really nobody's business. But <laughs> <laughs> I I can't escape that, it, and it sucks. But whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you may be the type of person that do not cross Rihanna because there's no going back. Is that right? <laughs> That's a weird question yeah. to ask. No, 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 no. Um, I love your nail polish, by the way. What Thank color you. Is that? Show, show the people. Mm, it's like a little plum action. Yes, mm -hmm. a little plum action. All right. For the fall. What do you think is the biggest misconception about you? Huh? <laughs> um, hey. Is there something that you read about yourself that you're like, man, no, that's. I mean, me. there's so much. So much. There's so much. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't, I don't know because everybody has their own perception, and I just, I only know this, so. Right. I, it's hard for me. You to just tell. live day to day. Do you read yeah. everything that's written about you, or, you, not, or do you stay? Not everything. Especially recently, man, I was so buried in making unapologetic that at times, I mean, I was the worst friend even. Like, I wouldn't even reply to my friend's texts and stuff like that. I had no service in the studio, so I, it was hard for me to even communicate. I, and I just, I, I worked day and night and made it happen. and. It was hard for me to even pay attention to frivolous stuff like the blogs. Sometimes I do it for fun, but recently I didn't have any time. Does it piss you off when you read things that you know aren't true? Or at this point, seven albums in, are you, are you able to kind of fly above it? It's like, ugh, typical. Typical. Yeah. Um, and you brush it off. You know, some things hurt more than others, or some things are like, seriously, this is, is so messed up that somebody's gonna read it and believe it because every time I read it, I read it like a fan, not like me, but right. How as though I was people? reading it about somebody else. And sometimes they could really make it believable and you can't even get mad at people for believing it. So yeah. that part sucks, but you can't even get caught up in that. No, you, yeah. you will die. <laughs> I read uh, that, that earlier in your career, you said that you wanted to be the black Madonna. Yeah, you know what? Madonna is one of those artists that she was very self-expressive. She was bold. She was fearless. And all those are things that you, I, I looked up to as yeah. a young woman. I wanted to be all those things. I wanted to really just be myself and feel free to express it and not be afraid of what people would, would think about it. Well, you are now, you have, you have 24 top 10 hits. The, the, the stats on your record sales, absolutely, because that's staggering, are staggering. I mean, at what point do you feel like, I did it, I'm the Black Madonna? At what point in your career will you feel like, really, I mean, you have this Navy, you have 62.3 million fans on Facebook. 
there will never be another Madonna. Like yeah. that, that just like point blank. At yeah. this point, I am so good with being Rihanna, and like, I, I, I love her. <laughs> like I'm, I'm cool. Like I'm, yeah. I'm okay. You're okay. And, and Madonna's still the shit, and she'll always be Madonna. Yes. Like she's the queen. Like she's. Now, awesome. when you, you Madonna's like just about. Uh, <laughs> Madonna's actually thirty years older than you. Where do you want to be in 30 years? What do you want to want to be doing in 30 years? Do you 30 know? 30 years, I'll be 54. Yep. I want to be She's skinny. on a world tour right now. You want to be skinny. Okay. I want to be fierce. I hope my tits are still sitting up. Okay. Good, good. All these are the things, but yes. that's what I really want at 55. Okay. Nothing tips, else will matter okay. at that point. Very good. Okay, I can, we, can all, we can all understand that. In some, in some, when are you going to collaborate with Madonna, by the way? Hmm. That, that would be so sick. Okay. I would love to. Okay, we would enjoy that. We would enjoy Just that. Just put it in the air. Why is, why is the album called Unapologetic? Because it's very, it's very true. It's very raw, it's honest, and it, it's storytelling. Each, each song, and, and even the way it flows on the album, it really makes sense. It takes you on a journey all the way to that's just the half of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, I, I, that's, it, it can only be that way. There's only one truth, and you can't apologize for that. And that's why I called it that. Do you like the nickname Riri? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is there, I have to think that there was a moment in time when Aretha Franklin was nicknamed Riri a little bit. Is it cool with Aretha that you two share a nickname? <laughs> have you two discussed this? Uh-oh, that's trouble. No, I just, I mean. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't know that. That's actually such a cool, fun fact. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. OK, we have a question from Matejo, uh, who wrote in on Facebook, wants to know, who uh, inspires you the most? Hmm. Yes, someone in the Navy it, said her makeup is tight, and it is thank tight. You. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, sorry, sorry, I got distracted. Oh, who, who, who inspires you the most? Oh, um, my grandma still, still. <laughs> No, because she's just like a complete woman, and like, if I could even make it to half of that, I'll be in great, great. That's very great nice. hands. That's very nice. What? Let me ask you this: when you're when you're in the car, what song do you turn up? Do you crank on the radio every time it comes on? Right now, <laughs> is there a song that you're like, "This is my jam, right my now"? Jam. Crank it, bring it up. Ratchet, 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 Navy coming out. Um, I love bands. <laughs> Lo love and pop that. Yeah. <laughs> How do you, wh what do you do if, what do you do if Call Me Maybe comes on? <laughs> where, where, where are you going? You changing the channel, you I, turning it up, or you staying with it? I don't like listening to pop music in the car. Okay. Let's just say that. I don't. Um, I like to get on my head and get crazy yeah. <laughs> in the back seat okay. with my friends. Raquel <laughs> we can't get too crazy to that song. Right, right. <laughs> um, there are limits to Call Me Maybe. Uh, Raquel wants to know if it's hard to remain you with all the success at such a young age. Um, no, I, I would say it, is it can be very easy, easy to be led astray or caught up and sucked into the fame and the bright lights and everything being great and, you know, it, it can be easy to do that, but I have great people around me and, and a lot of people that I've known since my childhood. Yeah. Um, a, lot, a lot of people I trust, my big brothers, Jay-Z, Jabron, and Tata, like, they're my backbone and, and at this point I'm in super good hands with them and they keep me grounded. They keep me in check. My mother is still my mother. Yeah. <laughs> and she also checks me on the reg. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on the reg. Lanaya <laughs> wants to know how the hurricane had an impact on you as a, 
as a person. Obviously, everyone's talking about Hurricane Sandy. It's really difficult to see something so tragic going on and, 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 and not be able to do anything about it. You, there's nothing you could control, you know? It's mother nature and it, it, it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse and you just keep holding your breath and it's, it's really sad what happened here. But um, tomorrow I will be donating $100,000 to the Food Bank of New York City. And um, we're also doing a listening party at the 4040 and uh, everybody's asked to donate like some blankets and bleach. They want cleaning yep. uh, brooms, stuff like that, sleeping bags. And um, they get that's to listen to the album if they donate. That's, that's great. Yeah. That's a good prize. And they have to donate it to the Daily News Hurricane Relief Fund. OK. Yes. Daily News Hurricane Relief Fund. Yes. That's great. And uh, that's kind of you to donate that money to the food bank. They really Thank need you. it. That's great. Daniel um, has, has a question, and I love this question. What has been the highlight of your career? He wants to know. Such a simple question, yet considering the heights you have gone to, has there been one moment that in your mind you've said, oh man, this is, this is it? I had a, f a couple moments where I felt like that. My first Grammy, I felt like, oh my god, this is not real. Like, my dream was not even to get a Grammy, but here I am with one, it was sick. But um, then, what I always wanted to do my whole life was buy my mom a house, so when I was able to do that, I was like, yeah. I, I, I kind of got a certain way, <laughs> if I could do that, because that was just a dream. That's great, mm -hmm. that's so nice. I wanna, we play a little game on Watch What Happens Live that I want to play with you. It's really easy, it's called Spill the Tea, all right? <laughs> I just throw out a name to you, and she's got the tea. She's got, yeah, she's got two cups of tea. Um, I give you a name. These are people in your world. You just tell me the first thing that comes, comes to your mind, okay? okay. Kanye West. Uh, genius. Jay-Z. Even more genius. <laughs> uh, Beyonce. Gorgeous. Um, a stab to my self-esteem. <laughs> Mariah Carey. Uh, her voice is an instrument. It's uh, unreal, really. Mary J. Blige. Power. Power. Mm -hmm. Lady Gaga. Crazy, but I love that. <laughs> I'm crazy, too. <laughs> Madonna. Uh, queen. Nicki Minaj. Ass. <laughs> I love you! Eminem, Eminem. Eminem is the shit. Yes. Eminem is the shit. Um, Chris Brown. He's dope too. He's dope too. <laughs> He's kinda you, all right. Are you guys together? No. Not together. Okay. All right. Um, I want to play another little situation with you. You have 62 million fans on Facebook, as we said, okay? I have a list of the, the items that they clicked like on, okay. okay? And I want to give you a little quiz to see how well you know these 62 million people. <laughs> Not easy to know 62 million people. Okay, so these were the three movies, okay, that are three of their favorite movies. Paranormal Activity, Harry Potter, or Avatar. Which one of those three movies do you think is your fans <laughs> on Facebook number one movie? Paranormal Activity. It's Harry Potter. My oh friend. damn! It's Harry Potter. Are you a Harry Potter fan? Are you a are you a Harry Potter fan? Yes, but I am not all the way caught up. Okay, you're with, not caught up. Well, you've been you know, busy. I stopped a few. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Favorite athlete. Okay. Cristiano Ronaldo. LeBron James, Maria Sharapova. Is it LeBron James? It's Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> what kind of fans are these? <laughs> <laughs> okay, favorite TV show? Glee, The Simpsons, or Watch What Happens Live on Bravo? <laughs> The thing is, right, 
every time I guessed my favorite, yes. it was wrong. Okay. So I got a feeling that is Glee. Okay. Because Glee just got some kind of hold on my fans right now. Yes. And I, I'm going to go with that, but I hope I'm wrong. You hope you're wrong because Because I hope it's yours. Oh, that's nice. Yes, because that's, that's my favorite. Nice. I hope I, you know. Oh, because that's your favorite. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. You're very politic. Aww. It's The Simpsons. And actually, <laughs> I, the choice that Faith, Facebook that's gave me fan. didn't include Watch What Happens Live, so I just threw that in there. Uh, okay, last one. Favorite book. Hunger Games, Da Vinci Code, Harry Potter. Harry Potter? You got it. Oh. No the lady knows her fans. She does. She absolutely. A little bit. She absolutely knows her fans. Who have you not worked with or collaborated with that you'd like to? Katy Perry. Katy Perry. Katy Perry. Yep. Definitely Katy Perry. Katy yeah. Perry. Yeah. Katy Perry. Still, I don't know, like, why we have not gotten this done yet, but. Make it happen. We will. Yeah, yeah man. Make it like, happen. Where do you get your fashion inspiration? My mood. Your mood? Yes. <laughs> are, what sign are you? A Pisces. You're a Pisces. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is your sign? I'm a Gemini. Okay. I'm a Gemini. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love you. Oh, they love you. You're Navy. I have to say, your Navy has been <laughs> stewing out here. <laughs> so excited. I mean, Thank this is you guys. Now, I love are, you. Are, what did you what did what did you think when you when you learned that you had passed Eminem? By the way, because Eminem is who you surpassed on the on uh, to be the top rated person on Facebook. Sick. Sick. Like, cause I I was okay with being number two to Eminem. I'm like, right. I passed Lady Gaga. That's impossible. Right, right, right. <laughs> then I'm like Eminem. Okay, I'm cool. I'm cool. Right. That's Eminem. Like, I'll never pass right. him. I mean. Well, Chauncey wants to know, what is one thing on your bucket list that you haven't done that you would love to do? I want to skydive. Uh-huh. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. You want to skydive? Yes. What are you scared of? You seem unafraid to me. Really? Yeah, you do. Skydiving. Are you? <laughs> Very good. Well, That's as why a, it's on the bucket list, because it's, it's way down there on the bucket list. <laughs> as a follow-up to that, actually, Isabel wants to know, do you get nervous before performing? Absolutely. You do? Every time. Every single time? Like yesterday before Victoria's Secret, like I was shitting bricks. Like, no way. So, like, could not even. And the, there was also added pressure because I was also performing two brand new songs right. um, from Unapologetic for the very first time. Yeah. One which we finished writing two nights ago, so I still were, was trying to remember the words, and I still had to act like I didn't forget the words. Right, right. Like I wasn't thinking about it, but it, you know, there was lots of tits and ass to distract me from all that. So that's good. That's fine. We love tits and, and ass. Smooth. Right, that's good. <laughs> Do you, um, speaking of getting nervous before gigs, has there been a gig? that you thought in your mind, oh man, okay, this is it. I actually don't know how I'm gonna do this one. It's in front of the most people I've ever been in front of. You know what I hate? Yeah. Well, not hate, but makes me the most nervous? What? Award shows. Award shows. Because like, all your peers are out there, or? No, because, yeah, it's not my fans. You know, it's peers and it's critics and Competitors. my fans are like down the lens. So it's like, it's a little disconnected. I feel like, I don't know, like I get super scared, like nervous. I, I don't know, I just hate that feeling. But right. I'd rather just come out there and see my people and like right. people, the energy. Their energy, my Navy. fans' energy. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, Nicole wants to know how social media affects the way that you make music. Do you consider feedback from fans? Absolutely. Big time. Like, my fans definitely have an impact on the way I make music, what I do. Like, it still comes from me, and I still like to show them new things, but 
I, I always want to make sure that, you know, I have to pay attention. Yeah. They say things that you need to hear. Like, yeah. They're out there in the world. They're not in the little box here. They know what's going on, and, and you will be stupid to be so oblivious to what they're saying. You have to pay attention. Very good. Well, it's clear that you do, and it's clear that your success, you know, just is 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 proof of that. Um, the album is unapologetic. Everybody get it. The tour is the seven 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 tour. Yes. It starts yes. in Buffalo, New York. Am I right? Yes, yes. it does. Okay, very Achoo. good. Um, November 19th, everybody at home and everybody here, I can't wait for you guys to rock out with me. Unapologetic. Yes. That's yes. Rihanna. Give it up, everybody, for Rihanna! Thank you. Thank you so much. This is so fun. And today, we are answering questions for Yahoo. Yahoo! <laughs> Okay, Jim, if you could name a planet, mm -hmm. what would it be called? Okay, this is the most ridiculous question I've ever heard. <laughs> I know. But if I could name a planet, I would just, I would call it Jim's planet. Because I don't see any reason to mess around and be unclear with what's gone on. I was allowed to name a planet. <laughs> and so I'm going to call it Jim's planet. I would probably name it Shaw. <laughs> it's become sort of a language of sorts between my sister and I. Her name is Jen, which turned into Ja. And how do you spell that? J-H-A-T, that's how it is See, in my phone. Oh my God, I would have gone S-H-A, <laughs> without a doubt. Everybody does that. I like that, it has meaning. Sha, Rihanna, on your planet, what would the main rules be? Free shoes for everyone. That's a good plan. Always, mm -hmm. any kind, and ice cream. Tons of ice cream. You can only eat ice cream. That's the only food I'm going to have. Y'all are going to need a good health care plan on that planet, <laughs> but you will have good Tons feet. of ice cream and no diabetes. Well, that's not logical now. Oh, and no, yeah. Well, you there's can't, more. No, you what? Can't, you can't what? You can't gain Criticize. weight. Criticize? You can't gain weight. <laughs> I don't know about this. But I don't have to move there. I have my own planet. <laughs> what three things would you take with you from Earth to your planet? I would take Todd, my partner. I would take Otis, my white dog. And I would take Rufus, my Shih Tzu. <laughs> and the rest of you can piss off. <laughs> what three things would you take? Shaw. Uh-huh. Because she can pretty much facilitate every other thing that I need. My iPod. My iPod speakers. What skill or talent would you like to learn? To whistle. I can't either. Really? I can't. I'm See? very surprised I a musician so can't. I feel so much better. So do what? I. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I don't even mean that because I consider myself my own level of musician and what I do. I've been trying to learn how to whistle. What do you think the problem is? Decades. I just don't know. I think you either can or you can't. It's one of those things. Have you tried hard? Yes, and it sounds just like that. So you won't even do it? Nope. That's probably wise. What secret talent could you teach the boo? I get the impression they don't know, like they would not know what a piano was if they saw it. Like mm -hmm. they'd be like, what is this used for? And so I want to say I could teach them to play the piano because I do play oh, the piano. Oh, you do? I do. Speaking of musicians. I know, and I can't whistle. Uh-huh. I didn't, I took it back as soon as I said it. I was just surprised. I always felt like, do you know how often a script calls for an actor to whistle? It's frequent. <laughs> that is really good to know. I, did, I would have never guessed that. Did I play? Yeah. Because you don't think I have an ounce of rhythm? What? What's the judgment you think? That played? is really mean. No. Uh, uh, That's no. not what I said. You said. No, you're right. I put words in your mouth. But you're but, so great at acting. Yeah. That I that couldn't picture you having any room time for, for another absolutely, skill. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank See you. See how I changed that? You were that's See what really I did? sweet. <laughs> it's because, you know, not an interview goes by where I don't ask you about the M word. And I have to for the Navy and for the say. And don't get mad at me, girl. Don't get I mad at me. I can't get mad. I can't. I can't get mad. It's Rachel, you know? Brie, girl, we are reunited. I'm so happy to see your <laughs> face. It's so good to I'm, see you. I'm really happy to see you too. No more red carpets these days, but I get to see you a little bit. I, How have you I, been? 
I've been hanging in there, but more importantly, how have you been, how have you been spending your time these days? I mean, obviously you've been working on an amazing skincare line, but what else has Brianna been doing? Um, you know, I really thought that this quarantine era would seem like, you know, when snow days when school are out for me, that's hurricane days in Barbados when you get to stay home for a few days. And it's like, wow, we don't have to go anywhere. That's great. But I've been more busy in quarantine than ever before. <laughs> and I have been uh, just preparing for this launch. This has been, it's like a newborn. So you just, you have to nourish it and be hands on. And I've been really excited. So it's, it's time now. And I, I can't believe it happened that quickly. We've been working on it for years. So it feels like it's been, we've been waiting and waiting. Congrats on the skincare line, girl, because I feel like now could not be a better time for a skin inclusive line to really launch. I feel like you have been at the forefront of this movement. So how does it feel to be a pioneer of an inclusivity movement? Thank you so much. Um, being inclusive for me always came second nature. Um, growing up in my household, I've always looked up to my mom as like my beauty inspiration. I wanted to do everything that she did, but it didn't come as like a surprise or like we needed to crack the code on makeup to me when I was making foundation, or including shade ranges um, like hers, because I've always seen that. Um, so I've applied that to everything that I've done because I see how women become so emotionally invested and they feel represented. They feel like they can see themselves on the shelves and the campaigns and, and even in sizes in my in my lingerie line. So with skincare, we, we're gonna do the same thing. We want these, these products to work for all skin types and of course, all skin tones. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, you know, and you're Thank continuing you. that with the skincare line. It's awesome. But <laughs> also calling this a new culture of skincare. How so? What does that mean to you? Uh, skincare, for, this is a, a newborn baby in the skincare industry. And so I am going to approach it with a new eye, my eye, but also I want these things to be different from everything that's on the market. I want it to be simple. I want it to be accessible, but still with the high level of ingredients that some of these other brands do, but they're so expensive. And I realized that you can actually make the best product and it does not have to be inaccessible. And to start off with a million things, it kind of confuses the consumer. You give them what they need at first, three simple steps, and from there, we take them on a journey throughout their skincare. I love it. Because, girl, you you and I both know, you walk down the aisle and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm confused. I'm confused. I'm always confused. <laughs> yeah. Because well, I don't know which one is for me. I know. So I wanted to I wanted to simplify that for, for our, our consumers. Well, thank goodness. I love it. And it's eco <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome, girl. You're just hitting it on all cylinders right now. But you know, <laughs> I was so interested in, in hearing and reading that your journey with skincare, like so many of us, started as a teen, but you tried a product mm -hmm. that, like discolored your skin. So what happened on that front? I mean, you always, you, you start off with acne, right? And then you want to go into acne treatments. And I was just starting my career as a teenager when I was going through these breakouts. And so we, I went to like what I thought was like the best of the best um, uh, doctors to take care of my skin. And it ended up being too harsh for my skin. It wasn't for my skin type or my skin tone. It, it bleached me, it, it blotched my skin up in patches. And then that took years to even get back. But then there's hyperpigmentation and then there's I'm 32, you know. And look at there's so um, many different levels of the journey that it, it's complicated. Yeah. But you you go through this journey, and I had to take all of that into account when making this line and starting it because I, I wanted everyone to be a part of it and not feel like mm, it might not work for me or it's too harsh for me. I don't like I don't like anything that's harsh. 
Yeah, no, and I'm so glad that we have these th three simple steps to go through with you to go on the skincare journey. And I love seeing the campaign. Thank you. And honey, I noticed that ASAP Rocky was making a debut in your campaign and looking very fine in the process. How did he get <laughs> in the campaign? Well, he's, to me, in, in the industry, he's one of the guys that like everybody loves their, his skin. I mean, I've always wanted to know like, how the heck do you have better skin than like right. half these girls? I mean, like, what, what do you do? But he, I wanted men to be represented because this skincare line is gender neutral. I want it to be for everyone. And so you don't, men get scared to use skincare. They think it's like a feminine thing. They think it's just for girls. And I don't, I, I don't like that idea because we all have skin, we all wear skin. And so I needed that male representation in the campaign. And so Rocky and, and Naz, and Naz X, sorry, not Naz. <laughs> Little I, was gonna, Nas X. Nas X. <laughs> I can't call him Nas for short. There's already a Nas. Little Nas X. Yeah, exactly. But we wanted that male representation so men knew that it was okay. It's so good. I can't wait to pass this along to my now fiance. So he's going to have to. Oh, congrats, girl. Congrats, girl. What was this? A, a quarantine, a quarantine <laughs> engagement? I know. I'll have to send you a wedding invite, girlfriend. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I'll invite. I'll interview you. Hi. Hey. <laughs> hey, right hey, look, I got to ask you this because, you know, not an interview goes by where I don't ask you about the M word. And I have to for the Navy and for the say, and don't get mad at me, girl. Don't get I mad. I can't at me. get mad. I can't. I can't it's get mad. Me. It's Rachel, you know? But I got <laughs>